511 papers in the pound paper pack, 512 papers in the thousand paper pack, 513, 514, 515, Susan, my little watch stop, do you have the time? 517. It can't be, my watch stopped around 620 or 621. 19. It's perfectly clear, all right. 646 and 32 seconds. Please, 646, 630. I've lost it. Oh. Susan, how are we doing with that report on the Philip paper comparison test? Uh, it's almost done. Okay, good. Your shopping cart is outside. Well, I guess I'll go home in it. <laughs> Very funny. Just take what's in it home and check the stuff out. Oh, Brad, please, no more work over the weekends. I've been here since 7 o'clock this morning. I'm exhausted. That's right, because when I came in here, she was saying numbers to herself. <laughs> and, and I think I'm coming down with a cold. Well, okay, fine, then take the rest of the day off. Oh, thanks a lot, Brad. It's almost 7 o'clock. <laughs> then go. I'm leaving, I'm leaving. Sure. <laughs> like, did anybody leave their lights on in their car in the parking lot? No. Well, good, then I won't have to walk around and check. Alf, it's almost 7 o'clock at night. People have been here all day long. And now you pick to go around and ask anybody if they left their lights on? Well, you're welcome. <laughs> See you Monday. Susan. The uh, fill a paper comparison test? Brad, it's all on the table in nice, tidy little piles, ready to be tabulated. And Alf, Alf, don't touch that. Now, I will do it the first thing Monday morning. Yeah, well, what is it? Lisa Cartwright. She just moved in here, I think. Oh, yes. Apartment 14, right up those stairs. Thank you. <sighs> I was born one morning when the sun didn't shine. I walked to my mother and a bottle of mine. St. Peter, don't you call me cause I can't go. Sorry. I owe my soul to the store. Hey, she's not Lisa. Uh, oh, Lisa Cartwright, uh, right up those stairs, apartment 14. <laughs> My name's not Lisa. <laughs> Mr. Kramer. Oh, Susan, Susan, Susan. Oh, Mr. Kramer, Mr. Kramer, Mr. Kramer. It's a messy business sometimes. You got to do things that you don't want to do. Oh, no, not another rent raise. No, no. It's a petition to evict the tenant. Which one? Uh, 
A woman named Lisa Cartwright. Number 14? Yeah. I read it to her last week. Seemed like such a nice girl. And then I see this parade of men marching up the stairs all week. Well, maybe she entertains a lot. Yeah. For a fee. <laughs> She's a, you know, a prop. <laughs> Brock. A Protestant? <laughs> no, she's a, a a lady of the evening. Oh, are you sure? Can't be anything else. And with all that action on the stairs, I say she was a lady of the morning and the afternoon as well. <laughs> Gee, I'm sorry, Mr. Kramer. I just can't sign anything that would evict somebody from their home, even if it is a house. <laughs> Look, I don't have that many names anyway. It's okay. I'm only doing this because my wife made me. Maybe I could get more signatures if I tried to evict my wife. <laughs> I wonder where her bed is. <laughs> love for sale. <laughs> Does a young love for sale. Love that's only slightly soiled. Love that's only slightly soiled. Lisa Cartwright is upstairs, apartment 14. In the flesh? Oh, I mean, uh, Lisa, from upstairs? Hi. Uh, hi. Oh, listen, it looks like my clients have been bothering you. Bothering me? Oh, no. Well, I need your help. What for? I'd like to use your telephone. Uh, mine hasn't been installed yet, and I have a call to make. Oh, sure, go right ahead. Oh, thanks. Boy, I am completely at a loss without a telephone. Well, isn't everybody? <laughs> oh, oh, gosh, my tub. Excuse me, I'll be right back. My tub's overflowing. Hello, Frank? Lisa Cartwright. Hey, where have you been? Do, do you have my new address? Oh, good. Well, you better get right over here. I've got hundreds of suits and sport jackets to get rid of. Yeah, all of last year's samples from Mr. Macho Clothing Line. Uh-huh, 50 bucks each. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. Bye. Gosh, would you look at this? This book I was gonna read in the tub is totally soaked. Oh, that never happens to me. I do all my reading in bed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess we should introduce ourselves. I, I'm Lisa Cartwright. Hi, I'm Susan Goodenow. This has been some week, you know, moving in, trying to get my job done at the same time. Oh, I can imagine. I am exhausted. You know, sometimes I feel I should chuck it all and just quit. Have you really given that a lot of thought? <laughs> oh, yeah, but not this week. I'm having my year-end sale. <laughs> so far. That's a lot of sales. Yeah, I hope to do another hundred by the weekend. Holy smoke! Well, that's if I'm lucky. You know, most guys know what they want. They're out in a minute. Oh, my goodness. Well, then there are the ones that, you know, are always asking for something new, unusual, Different. Kinky. <laughs> well, I never heard it put that way, but I guess you could say that. Oh, boy, I better go. I've got a junior and a portly waiting upstairs. <laughs> I know one of them's gonna want alterations. What kind of alterations? Probably sleeve jobs. <laughs> Clothes? Oh, sure. Sometimes right out the door. <laughs> they like the way my pants fit. Men have been going up and down those stairs in your pants? Yeah, that's not all. Dresses. <laughs> no, a sports jacket. Oh, 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 Susan, listen. I know why you're confused. I haven't told you what I do. I'm a representative for a clothing manufacturer. Right now, I'm trying to get rid of all my sample suits and sport jackets from last year's line. Oh. <laughs> oh, well. 
<laughs> you see, some of the people in the building, they yeah. saw all these men going up and down the stairs, and <laughs> they thought you were, um... Uh, uh... <laughs> <laughs> They're kidding! <laughs> going up and down the stairs in my pants? Dresses, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that's cleared up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, what do you do, Susan? Oh, well, I work for Brad Gabriel, you know, the consumer advocate on TV. <laughs> oh, that sounds fascinating. Well, mm -hmm. it's not so fascinating when you got a whole pile of work to do by Monday morning. You have to work the weekends. Hey, hey, Susan, don't you ever go out? Have some fun? When? There just never seems to be the time. Susan, you should make the time, you know? Listen, I've got a couple of regular buyers in from Houston. They would love to take me and a friend out to dinner tonight, you know? Oh, I don't Now, know. Susan, no strings attached. You know, they're not those kind of guys. And, well, we could try this great little new restaurant, uh, Cousin Cuisine. What do you say? Oh, I, I don't think so. I really... I, I, oh, excuse me. Oh, shoot. Hello. Hello, Susan. Brad, now, yeah. listen, Brad, uh, you are out of my life for this entire weekend. Look, I, I know how I get sometimes, and I, uh, I guess I get all caught up in my work. I expect everyone else to be, too. Look, the reason I called is uh, I wanted to invite you out to dinner tonight. No business, no shop talk. We just sit, eat, relax. What do you say? Sound good? Oh, well, gee, I don't know. I'm... Come on, Susan, it's a brand new place. Everybody's talking about it. We ought to check it out. Check it out? Yeah, you know, to see if it's all it's cracked up to be. Uh, gee, Brad, I, I really think I'm coming down with a cold, so, um... I, I think you'll understand. I'm just not gonna move all weekend. I'll... I'll see you Monday. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> Nerve! That man calls me up ostensibly to ask me out to dinner and then just manages to slip it in that it's really a work assignment. You know, I have half a mind to just chuck all this extra work just to spite him. Hey, good idea! And, Susan, you could start by going out tonight. Oh, I don't know. I mean, I'd have to wash and dry my hair, get dressed, put on makeup. Well, how long would that take? Ten minutes. <laughs> Here, monsieur. Salad nizoise. Red snapper. Zucchini. Bon appétit, monsieur. Thank you very much. Another table. Oh. And there is a note. Oh, hello. Yeah, you got yourself a little note. Dear Susan. Oh, well, looks like a secret admirer is yours, dear Susan, huh? For someone who wasn't going to move all weekend, you're certainly getting around. Uh, oh. uh, would you excuse me for a moment? Sure thing. Sure. Sure. Susan Goodenow, what a surprise. Yes, isn't it? Thanks for the champagne. You're welcome. Uh, Brad, I think I should explain something. If you like. Uh, Brad, um, I like my job. Most of the time, I find it fun and, and fulfilling. It's just not my whole life. I knew you wouldn't understand. Oh, no. I understand perfectly. That's why I invited you to dinner. Oh, come on now. Deep down inside, this was really a work assignment. That is unfair, Susan. It was out of sincere concern for the fact that somehow you seemed overworked that I called you. Susan, believe me, this had nothing to do with work. It didn't, huh? Absolutely not. And when you didn't accept my invitation, I was hurt. I had to eat anyway, so here I am. In no official capacity. None whatsoever. Show me what you have in your pockets. <laughs> 
I've been through this before. I've been to restaurants with you. All right, come on. How many little plastic bags so far? What are you talking about? If there is a God in heaven, you've got fish in your pocket. <laughs> I suspected it might be frozen, but I did not come here I arrest to... my case. Thanks for the champagne. See you on Monday morning. Oh, well, there we go. <sighs> An old boyfriend? No, it's my boss. No oh, problem. Oh, all good, then. I think we should order up some grub. I'm hungry enough to eat the hind end of a hobby horse. <laughs> it's a gall darn good idea. Waiter! Larkin? Tell me about this uh, here T-bone steak, son. Steak will kill you faster than a knife in your heart. <laughs> oh, he's not the waiter. Everybody, this is my boss, Brad Gabriel. Oh. Uh, this is Lisa Cartwright, my new neighbor. This Hi. is Hal. How are you? Good to meet you. A and this is Jim Bob. Patty, how are you? Yeah. They're from Houston. Yeah. Texas. Yeah, terrific. Great. So, what's wrong with checking things out, huh? What, Brad? I... Well, what, Brad? I happen to be a consumer advocate. I like my job, I know my job, and I'm dedicated. Unlike certain people I can mention. Oh. Hey, Jim Job. Take my advice. Don't eat the steak. Put some globs of fat in your bloodstream. It's dead. Uh, would you excuse me for just one moment? Sure thing. How dare you? How dare you embarrass me in a social occasion like this? I, I'm totally mortified, and my friends are completely embarrassed. You, your friends? Those two guys, they look like refugees from a beer commercial. You're lucky if you don't get polyester poisoning. Oh, oh here we go. Yes, uh, I think that's settled. <laughs> Good. Oh, guess again, Susan. I just hope that you can enjoy your social evening, knowing how disappointed I am in you. Hey, you kind of a intense little fella, ain't you? <laughs> now, listen, uh, Jim Bob, why don't you just stay out of this, huh? Uh, Brad, please, I think we can discuss this on Monday morning. At the you know, Jim Bob, I get the distinct impression that this little lady's being disturbed by this here dude. You know, I was thinking the same thing. Uh -huh. Back in Texas, we wouldn't let a pesky little horse fly like him bother a no, sir. pretty little pony like Miss Susan here. Pretty little pony, Susan? You like being out with someone who calls you a pretty little pony? Hey, Nibnop, why don't you just ask her, why don't you just ask her to win it? You know, it looks to me like you could stand a little bit closer to your razor in the morning, young son. Another county he heard from. First Wild Bill Hickok, now his sidekick, Clem Kadiddlehopper. Jim Bob? Hal? Oh, Hal. That's uh, so, cool. Uh, it's Jim cool. Bob. I suppose you guys think you're tough, huh? I'm from New York, man. One phone call, all of Brooklyn. Hey. Hello? Gabriel, what's the scoop here? What? Your last three shows have been dull, dull, dull. Oh, I didn't know you watched. I don't have to. I have him. Tell him. Martin Blair, Programming and Demographics. <laughs> Let me tell you how dull. Listen to these ratings. Monday, 19.1. Tuesday, 17.4. Wednesday, 13. Even. We're talking numbers, Gabriel. Small numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Is it true you spend an entire program watching a frozen dinner melt? It was advertised as a quick thaw dinner for your hun on the run. Now, lo looking at spaghetti unraveling itself is not my idea of entertainment. Well put, Mr. Clyde. Why didn't you thaw the dinner out before the show? Uh, Gus, that's the type of stuff that Susan usually does. Usually? Yes. Where is she? Where is she? I'll tell you where she is. She's home. She is gold-bricking, goofing off, pretending she's sick. Oh, that's what's missing around here. I thought somebody had stolen a desk. <laughs> Maybe I'll buy like that girl. You little number. I'm thinking of firing her. Your what? Look, Gus, I did the show before she came here, and I can do it without her now. Have you called her? Yes, I called her on Monday morning, and she hung up on me. Have you called her since? No, and I'm not planning to. Not after that, Gus. Come gentlemen, on. Gentlemen, gentlemen, let me spitball this situation and stay with me on this. <laughs> Any program is the sum total of its elements. One is Brad and one is Susan. That makes two. Take away one, that leaves one. And Gabriel, one is the loneliest number you'll ever do. Let me tell you a story. When my second wife caught me in the makeup room with a little starlet, she left me. Oh, how I missed her. 
but I swallowed my pride and came crawling back. I said, honey, please come on home to me or I'll destroy your career and you'll never work in this town again. <laughs> and miracle of miracles, she came back. Come along, Blair. It's a very moving story, Mr. Klein. <laughs> Yeah, hello. No, look, I'm sorry, she's not here right now. Excuse me, I have to run now. Hello, Brad. Hello, Brad. You've been gone four days. You hung up when I called you, and now it's hello, Brad. Goodbye, Brad. Look, I don't know what's bugging you, but I'm glad we got this chance to have it out. Oh, there's nothing to have out. Oh, no? For starters, you weren't sick at all, were you? Oh, I had a cold all right, but uh, I got over that. So I just thought I'd come by and pick up a few things, and then I'm leaving. Leaving? Yes. You see, um, what I told you on Friday night is the truth. I really do like this job, but it isn't my whole life. That's why I'm leaving. You deserve somebody who's totally dedicated, and I think I'm just not that person. How can you say that you're not dedicated? I've seen you come in here and stay till late 9 o'clock at night most evenings. Yes, but I just can't do that anymore. I guess I just don't care enough. What does that mean, you don't care enough? You have the audacity to stand there and tell me you don't care enough? You're, you're here 7 o'clock in the morning and most days you skip lunch? Yes, you see, but if I, I really cared about this job, I'd do it cheerfully, gratefully. That's ridiculous. How can you live your life like that? I can't. That's why I'm leaving. Wait, wait a second, wait a second. Hold on, Susan. Look, I really don't care what went down in the past, but from now on, you come in at a decent hour, you leave at a decent hour, you take a full hour for lunch, and you do not work weekends. If you can't handle that, maybe you should quit. Come in at a decent hour? Leave at a decent hour? Lunch? Oh, I could handle that. OK, I'll see you tomorrow morning. 9 o'clock? 9 o'clock? The day is half over by now. Nine o'clock. <laughs> Come on, you want to go to lunch? Come on. No business, strictly pleasure. On me. First, take everything out of your pockets. <laughs> oh, come on. You're being ridiculous. <laughs> what do you mean? Come on. Why? why... <laughs> you happy now? The jeweler's glass. What jeweler's glass? What? That. How am I going to look at the lettuce? Brad, you don't look at lettuce. You eat lettuce. 